Hello, I'm Roger Heaton, clarinetist. We've just finished recording Miailo's clarinet quintet here in a church in North London. Um, it's a terrific piece uh, that uh, I commissioned uh, in 2011. Yes, 2011. Um, I've worked quite a lot with, uh, with the Kreutzer uh, Quartet, so we've done quite a lot of work together, um, uh, Bert Whistle Quintet and other things like that. Um, and I'd heard some of Miano's music before. It's, uh, it's very particular uh, kind of music that's to do with sound worlds, textures, and different kinds of techniques that, um, that look at the harmonics, uh, uh, not only of strings, but of, but of, but of wind, uh, woodwind as well. It's got a funny title, though. What does the title mean? The I was, title, I was, Magnets, I was, Lava, Crystal. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Um, well, actually, the title came after I'd, I'd finished the piece. Um, I would say it has to do partly with the actual compositional process uh, and, and partly with the, with the material. So it, so it has sort of two purposes, the title. Especially in the last, I would say, maybe three or four years, I've been working in this sort of way. A lot of the initial stages have to do with very fast and very intense work on the material. Mm -hmm. um, that way I feel it sort of generates momentum and I feel this influences the material itself. There are certain sort of magnetic pulls within it that appear because of it. If I can maintain that kind of momentum, I can, I can feel uh, the magnetic pulls in the music and it mm -hmm. makes me feel that I can control the material as it uh, develops in time. And then after the initial uh, period, after which I, I, I suppose I have the skeleton there, there is a sort of um, Hoover that goes from the beginning to the end of the piece, and that takes a lot longer, in fact, um, than the actual writing of the music, where I check all the details and, um, I, and in fact, I go a few times um, through the piece. So um, some of it has to do with just checking all the harmonies and, um, and rhythms and so on, and the way, the, way the, the structure sort of unfolds. And then a lot of it has to do with specific colors, and because in, in this piece they're very important. In terms of the writing, for strings, a lot of it has to do with the very specific indications about bowing techniques, about fingerings, and mm. so on. Mm. And this process feels to me like a sort of crystallization. At the end of it, it feels like uh, this initial outpouring of material has crystallized, and it very much has that kind of form. I feel that in time it appears as a sort of crystallized entity, I suppose I would say. In this piece, there are a few skeletons. The first one is a harmonic series that's based on mm -hmm. C. And then, at the same time, I have another skeleton which is based around perfect fifths, mm -hmm. which is the tuning of the quartet. And these, I feel, are sort of gravitational points. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of quartetons that appear uh, throughout the piece, and this ha uh, these have to do uh, with sort of obscuring the, uh, the gravitational points. So it's basically, I suppose I would say, they create tension. Uh, and then going back to the gravitational points is a certain kind of release. And I very much feel that this is sort of, um, you know, magnetic pulling and pushing mm. within the material. Mm. And as I said, this, I feel that this generates a kind of momentum in the material that, especially in the middle section of the piece, uh, ends up with, um, um, in some ways, a huge eruption. And mm. um, the analogy of that is really just like a, a volcanic mm. eruption. crystallization process, as I said, has to do with the structure of the piece. It also has to do with the way I feel sound crystallizes uh, from the fundamental to, um, to all the partials. Um, first of all, in terms of uh, small sections and in terms of, um, um, in terms of how sounds are arranged vertically, but second of all, the horizontal as well, as the material uh, develops, I feel it, um, uh, it, it creates a certain kind of crystallization of the... Mm of the musical language. Mm. Mm. 
I think overall I would say that the C harmonic series is the uh, is the main starting point yep. Yep. Um, because of course the open fifths can be found within that mm. um, and then quartertones within that and and so on but what I find interesting is how from equal temper tuning um, when you when you deviate certain uh, when, when you move certain um, certain number of the harmonics, how it gets very close. Of course, with string instruments, this is very idiomatic. So you can very easily deviate and uh, get to um, um, to the harmonic series. But at the same time, the quarter tone movement, uh, I play with the tension that the quarter tone movement uh, creates in relation to equal temper tuning. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I suppose there is an overriding skeleton that's. Um, that's based on the harmonic series, and within that, di there are different kind of hierarchies that mm -hmm. appear. Mm -hmm. Certainly from a clarinetist's point of view, um, it's a piece uh, that we sort of quasi-collaborated on, didn't yeah, we, I guess. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it has some very tricky moments in it, mainly to, to do with extremes of register. Uh, there are a couple of multiphonics that are to be played very, very loud. Um, uh, and one of them has a top C, a written top C on it. The other one has a has an, uh, an F sharp, um, and uh, you know that they they are quite different. Those multiphonic things, because also later on um, in the piece there are there are some chains of very very quiet ones, and always with playing multiphonics, it's this idea of being able, of balancing the two, the top mm. and bottom mm. um, pitch, and at these extremes of. Uh, of of dynamics as well. Having said that, it's a pe it's very much a clarinetist's piece. It's mm. written for the clarinet. There's no two ways about it. It, it. it works very, very well. But I know that you haven't written for the clarinet before, and I just wondered how you kind of got into that, apart from me asking you to write it, of course. Well, um, I have written a little bit for the clarinet, but not in this sort of way, I mm. have to say. Um, I think, I mean, when, when you asked me to write the piece, I, I suppose in the last few years I've, I've worked more and more like this, and with every piece now I do like this. When, when somebody asks me to, to write something, I spend quite a bit of time, um, I suppose you would say researching, but in some ways it's, I feel it's sort of like a, a building a library in my, mm. um, well, in my brain, really. So um, part of it had to do with the specific connection with you. Um, we, we did that festival in Cyprus, didn't mm. we, which is when mm. we first started playing together and mm. then um, or was it it was before that that at Bath Spa we did uh, yeah. that workshop so yeah. you heard some of my music and so yeah. on but through some of the conversations uh, first of all with you um, I got some sense of uh, what you find interesting in mm. 20th century and contemporary mm. music mm. and actually I kind of discovered we have some shared interests like mm. Chelsea for example yes, and, absolutely, you know, yeah. actually Radulescu too I think yep. and so, yep. although we didn't actually specifically talk about that yeah And then I read your chapter in the Cambridge Companion to the clarinet mm. and asked you to suggest a few other sources that I could consult for mm. extended techniques and especially multiphonics I was interested mm. in, I think, mm. and, and how practical quarter tones would be, yeah. um, tremolos as well, although yeah. that's, I mean, um, maybe it's less, um, uh, less risky, I suppose, if, yeah. if you know what you're doing in terms of the register. Yeah. But um, the, I wasn't, I mean, the multiphonics, that took a little bit of, uh, time to research, I think. Mm. And then um, I went and listened to a lot of music. Um, again, some of it suggested in your chapter and um, on the contemporary clarinet. And that I feel that that kind of built a library in my head mm. uh, for the clarinet and for the kind of context that I wanted to build uh, for this piece in terms of the communication between the clarinet and the quartet. Mm. Uh, and also, I've, I suppose, I discovered a way in which I could um, somehow bring in the clarinet 
to what I was kind of interested in doing, uh, what I'd started doing in previous pieces in mm. terms of string sound mm. and, um, mm. and so on. But I would say definitely it has a lot to do with you, even though we didn't physically sit down a lot and work on it. Mm. I feel that I found out a lot about you mm. and, <laughs> and about your interest. And really, I, I feel with every piece, actually, that for me it kind of has to be like that. It has to be that it's a collaboration. Mm. It has to feel that I'm flexible enough so that I mm. can do something that everybody's interested in. Mm. That's part of it. Mm. It seems to me that it's the only way it makes sense. Mm. Anyway. And I think it's a terrific piece uh, because it does the kinds of things that I'm interested in. <laughs> it's all about the instrument. It's all about what the, the different sounds you can get out of the instrument and the, even the kind of fabric of the instrument as well. Yeah. And, I, and I like all of that. I think that's... I that's think similarly great. for the strings, I think, as well. Mm. Obviously, I'm very closely connected to the string world, I feel. Mm. You know, and I always mm. have the violin there and I can always mm. try out things. Mm. And mm. if I want to stretch things in terms mm. of technique and so mm. on, I can always see what's practical. Mm. And I can always bring it, even if it's the cello, I can always bring something to a rehearsal and mm. ask Neil and so on. Mm. Mm. But with you, I couldn't do that mm. as much. I had to do a lot more actually proper research mm. and looking at the construction of the instrument mm. and mm. that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, mm. So it was kind of an interesting kind of uh, combination of, mm. of different approaches, I suppose, mm. I would say.